goodness with face, Pat, and Tiz. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Partners. Show with three friends, separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. As always, I am your boy, one third of the partners. It's Tiz, and I am along with the other third of the partners enjoying his bag of French Toast Crunch. Uh, You're everybody's favorite mutant ninja, the Padawan here, along with Dramatic Paul. Oh, this week is distinguished face. How are you doing, gents? <laughs> he got that. He got that mustache. <laughs> mustache. Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> dastardly face. Dastardly. Foiled again. <laughs> Foiled. <laughs> uh, rats. Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga said shit like cheese it. <laughs> cheese it. It's the buzz. <laughs> <laughs> cheese it the buzz. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, <laughs> shame. And chased <laughs> by Mounties <laughs> and <laughs> Deadly Do Right. Oh man, bro. No oh. cover. Meh. 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 This is this is the shit that uh, yeah. this is, mm, I don't even know what the I'm, fuck I was trying to say, but yeah, that's the shit. That's the shit and the shit with the shit and the shit. Y'all know what the shit is, man. What's good, y'all? Uh, we here, man. What episode is this? Episode thirty-four. God Ooh. damn, we get no knocking them down, knocking them down. We go to every down. club. We 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 partying everywhere. We got we we working on four hundred one k's. We got careers. <laughs> we thirty four. We thirty four episodes old, man. We we getting it. I, that's that's pre- that's pretty epic. Um, shout out to all of you. I like progress. Yes, man. That have been following us for all thirty four episodes, man. Thank you for sticking with us. Um. It's been a process, man, and week to week, man, you know, we 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 be pulling it together. But we here again, guys. And uh let's get right off into it, man, cuz I need this tonight. Um this is one of them nights where I need this. So let's kick it off with five 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 positive Cinco. news stories about black people. Let's talk about black people doing cool shit. So First things first, tenure was approved for the Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, Nicole Hannah-Jones. In a nine to four vote, the board of trustees at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill on Wednesday approved tenure for Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, Nicole Hannah-Jones. The vote Wednesday after a closed session comes after controversy about why Hannah Jones, a renowned journalist and winner of a MacArthur Fellowship known as a Genius Grant, was not offered tenure in her appointment at the Huntsman School of Journalism. Hannah Jones won the Pulitzer last year for her work on the New York Times Magazine 1619 Project, which examines the consequences of slavery in the United States. That project has been assailed by some conservative critics and she has faced staunch criticism since releasing it in 2019. That comes to us from NBC News. So shout out to Queen Nicole Hannah Jones, Pulitzer Surprise winning Nicole Hannah Jones for getting tenure. Go Tar Heels, you know, only for basketball. But, Peace Queen. Peace but, Queen. Indeed. Salute Peace to the queen. female soldiers. Indeed. Salute to the female soldiers. She's right there in the front line with that critical race theory. Right on. Wow. Right on. Wow. Right on. So that's big money right there. Um, another queen, uh, shit, the military base welcomes its first ever black owned natural hair care vending machine. I didn't even oh. know that this was a thing, but it is. So Cindy Taiwa, CEO and founder of Diva by Cindy has expanded her natural hair vending machine brand to the heights of the armed forces. Yes, the opportunity has come a reality at Fort Belvoir in Fairfax County, Virginia. This is the first military. Indeed. That's why I picked this one. 
This is the first military base to receive the machine, which is operated by Yolanda Brown, a military veteran who has been a franchise owner for about two years now. Diva by Cindy offers franchise opportunities and is hoping that other women and minorities take advantage of this opportunity in the business of the beauty industry. In 2017, Diva by Cindy hair care products, a natural and alcohol-free brand with extreme detangling abilities, opened the first natural hair care kiosk in Baltimore, Washington International Airport. In 2019, they revolutionized the industry by launching BWI Airport's first natural hair care automated vending machine affirming their place in the modernization of the beauty industry. That comes to us from blacknews.com. The first story came from NBC News. Now, that's dope. I didn't know they had hair care for, like, where you could just, you know, call at a player on, on, on the strength of, you know, let, let me get up on this uh, action here. You know, let me just, as I'm walking by one day, you know, as I feel like it, let me just get up on this. That, that's pretty dope to me. Did y'all know this was a thing? I, I didn't know, but no, I, I did not. I, I admire when somebody put something I off in the universe that wasn't there before. Indeed. Indeed. Yep. Big facts. As a creator, you just, that's one of those things you always want to do. So, Indeed. yeah. <laughs> Indeed. All right. So, um, Third story. <laughs> Third story. Siblings in Atlanta surprise mom by paying off her mortgage. Mm. June Hassan, a mother from Atlanta, Georgia, says she was pleasantly surprised when her children decided to help pay off her house. It started out as a joke. June had always made fun of letting. Hold on. June is all. Oh, shit. June had always made fun of. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there you go again. We got another one, y'all. June had always made fun of telling her son and daughters to pay off her house someday. But her children and grandchildren took it seriously and made it come true on her birthday. Inside the birthday card they gave her was a check for the remainder of her mortgage. We were just as surprised as she was that we were able to do it. Tony June's son, who was a lawyer, told Eleven Alive, a part of me thought it was possible. I meant it, it meant as much to me as it did to her. Tony said he had always thought of giving this gift to his mother since he was 14 years old. So for the last two years, he teamed up with his two sisters, Sherry and Jessica, to start saving up to finally make it happen. The siblings say that one of their sisters died last October, and it was obviously very devastating for their mom. After that, we said we have to just do this for her, Tony said. You never know how much time you have with someone June says that she feels blessed to be able to proudly celebrate the moment with both her children and grandchildren. Now, that's some dope shit. You always hear about, you know, black kids, you know, ain't worth shit. They ain't doing nothing for their parents. They cussing out their parents. But look mm -hmm. at what's really happening in the community. This is the shit that people don't be highlighting. But this is it. This, this is what's exactly. happening for real. People exactly. buying their fucking parents' cribs and shit. That's fucking dope to me. I love that's it. That's positive. Good I, I fucking love it. This shit made me happy. Like, I, I don't know if nobody else care outside of our podcast, but I really enjoy looking up these stories every week now. Like, this made me happy to see. Like, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what that's I'm talking real. about, black people. No. So, yeah. Shouts out to about, Tony. Oh, yeah. What you said, Tony? Right on. Shout out, shout, shout out to Tony. Yeah. Go, oh, Tony. Good man. Good man. <laughs> <laughs> and this ain't Tony that did this, but we was talking about it the other week on our podcast, so I guess it applies. That's going to how I'm going to segue into the next one. So, um, reparations. California has launched a slave reparations task force. A first in the country task force in California to study and recommend reparations for African Americans is conducting its inaugural meeting, launching a two year process to address the harms of slavery and systematic racism. Tuesday's meeting of the first state reparations committee of the US came as President Joe Biden commemorated the lives of hundreds of black people killed by a white mob in what was then a thriving African American community in Tulsa, Oklahoma, a century ago. 
It also comes just over a year after George Floyd, a black man, was murdered by a white police officer in Minnesota. A federal slavery reparations bill passed out of the House Judiciary Committee in April, but it, uh, but it faces steep odds. The bill commonly referred to as H.R. 40 was first introduced in Congress in 1989 and refers to the failed government effort to provide 40 acres or 16 hectares of land to newly freed slaves as the, as the Civil War wound down. That comes to us from the independent.co.uk. So yeah, man, uh, we was talking about, um, oh man, we was talking about reparation on the pod. Uh, a little bit. Uh, the stimulus versus the reparations. That's what right. we do. Yeah, right, base right, brought right. it up. Yeah. And yep. then, like right after that, I had a conversation with a dude, uh, one of my homeboys down here, and we was talking about reparations, and we was like, "Well, how could we get it? Like, who's going to figure out like who counts as a descendant of slavery? Who counts as far as who's white versus black and all of this shit. Like who's gonna actually come up with that? So now we got a committee guys, we got people working on it. So, you know, that's a start. Baby steps, baby that's steps. That's a start. We ain't have that at first. So it's the first, you know, in the country. So shout out to California for pushing that initiative forward. I appreciate and that. And shouts out to HR 40, Human Resources 40. There you go. <laughs> we do need a Human Resources for America. <laughs> Indeed. Every about damn time. Amen mm -hmm. to that, bro. Amen to that. So that was number four, guys. Um, and then it's way past due. What you said, Faze? It's way past due. Way overdue. Indeed. So um, so that was number four. And then number five. Annette Nance Holt becomes the first woman, first woman, period. She's also a black woman to lead makes even better. Chicago's fire department after working mm. for over 30 years in several different positions within the Chicago fire department. Annette Nance Holt recently became the first woman to lead the Chicago fire department. Her appointment to the top position of fire commissioner was confirmed last week by Chicago city council. WGNTV.com reports. Commissioner Holt has more than three decades of proven leadership and a passion for public service that makes her the perfect fit for this role, said Mayor Lori Lightfoot. Furthermore, in a time where more works remain in order to eliminate discrimination, racism, and sexism from the firefighter profession, Commissioner Holt's history-making appointment as the first woman and Black woman to lead as fire commissioner couldn't have come at a better moment. Holt was appointed first deputy commissioner in 2018 and has been serving as acting commissioner since Richard C. Ford retired earlier this year. So shout out <laughs> to Annette Nance Holt in Chicago. Make that commissioner Annette Nance Holt in Chicago. And you know that comes to us from goodblacknews.org. So man, shout out to the black movers and shapers. Look, look at that. Look at that equality there now. Like for once, we got a woman telling men to go down the pole by the fight fires. <laughs> oh, come on, bro. Hell no. The fight fires. No, you know women love firefighters. <laughs> oh, come on, bro. <laughs> What in the hell, man? <laughs> that is some cool ass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Damn straight it is, man. So, man, you know Damn. that's the cool black shit people are. That's the cool shit black people are doing this week, y'all. And you know, I like when you bring up that because we always talk about how how can we do this or people holding us back and what we have to do and what we can't do. But to highlight positive black stories of, of people that ain't really, how can I say, ain't really giving their props on a larger scale, I really like that. We're we trying to bring light to people who are doing some positive mm -hmm. in, in our community. Yeah, I'm right. Big fact. Moving on. So my topic this week I'm bringing to the table is um, basically sacrifices, you feel me, and the positive and negative effects that they can create. 
uh, when talking about sacrifices in every facet of life, you have to say there is sacrifice in any, in any relationship, personal relationships, um, sexual relationships, um, friendships, um, just dealing with yourself, business relations, um, internal sacrifices, sacrifices for your kids, sacrifices to save money. It just sacrifices all around. But with these sacrifices that are made, they're all good things that happen because if you're sacrificing something for sacrificing or something of your own for somebody else, say you're sacrificing time to spend time with your kid, you may be losing out, but they getting happy. You feel me? So it's positive and negatives on every sacrifice. So right. the sacrifices y'all made in life, you feel me like right. what do you feel is the biggest sacrifices that you've made so far and the positive and negative things have come from them? Wow. I'll go first. I'll go first. Thank now, you. The, the biggest <laughs> thing I can say that I've sacrificed just in life period is time. Um, all around, just uh, as I sit back and look on life as life and time has passed, I've sacrificed a lot of time doing things and just making other decisions, and I've let time go by not committing myself to other things. So, i.e., um, a job I had before when I was working um, working retail, uh, I was committed to my career, so I was committed there, but I was sacrificing time with my family. You feel me? So time was moving by, I was missing birthdays, I was missing this, I was missing that, all while I was focused on the career, trying to get the money to provide for the family. So while I was sacrificing time, I was focused on trying to do something else to provide. So where the positive was, you have more money on, to help with the income, the negative is you lose time with family and you miss out on important things. You feel me? But on the reverse side of that, if you want to sacrifice your income, you you may not be able to do what you need to do or do what you want to do per se, but you're satisfied in time and, and you're always there. But that's just a small example of sacrifice and positive and negative effects. You feel me? So I mean, like I said, time, that's like the biggest thing I can say I've sacrificed in life. Um just committing myself to different things and then looking back on hindsight twenty twenty because I don't believe that like, you can really see the the negative effects of your sacrifices in the moment. You only see what you see is when you take that step back and you look and you have a wider scale, a wider scope of, of the incident or the situation where you see, you can see both the positive and the negative because you can see now from your side and you can see holistically what the whole situation is by the sacrifice that was made and the outcome. Right, right. Um, damn, yeah. Um, I think well, I think it was two. I, I'd say one at the beginning or like more throughout our relationship before recent times with my wife. Uh, I've sacrificed like time with like time doing fun, silly shit, like going to the clubs and shit like that. Like I sacrificed a lot of that party stuff um, to build my relationship with her. So I feel like the good part is like I have a probably a stronger marriage than a lot of people that are like in my friend group down here. Like a lot of them come to us to try to like ask for, for ask questions and stuff. And I think it's because like we spend so much time like actually working on our relationship. But the downside is I also like missed out on a lot of shit that happened in like a good six or seven year stretch where like I just wasn't around a lot of shit so I missed a lot of shit um so that's definitely was the downside and then now I think the biggest sacrifice that I made I would say in recent times would have to be probably time like you said but specifically time spent away from following my dream like I spent a lot of time like doing my job which is fulfilling and I love it and it's my career but it also takes a lot of time away from like what is now my passion like my what I feel like my true love is which is podcasting so I feel like the good thing is it allows me to have a stable you know paycheck it allows me to do good in my community it allows me to you know take care of my family but it also you know, the downside is I know how much more I could do with this. 
if I had that time. You know what I mean? I understand. I'll pick up what you're putting down. Um, let's see what for me. They uh for me, I got some. Uh, my immediate one is I like sacrifice like me doing music so I can put all my energy in doing this book because I felt like the the same amount of creativity that I would use music is what I would use to make this book pretty much and. I sacrificed it. Uh, Tiz brought up something that like I kind of relate to a, a little bit. Like to get my life together <clears throat> or, or whatever, I sacrifice a lot of passions in that I wanted to do as far as like rapping and 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 art stuff or whatever, just so I can get my myself in a stable situation where I can move forward. Right. Pretty much because it was for a good minute. Life was kind of rocky and didn't know where to go. Some cases I'm still, but I think that's just me as an overthinker. I'm always overthinking, like, what's my, what's my next move? Next, what's my next move? But I can't make Rome in one night. So, Indeed. yeah, I would say probably low, sort of off the top of my head, probably the two sacrifices, two big sacrifices that popped in my head. Yeah. Right on. But uh, I would say the positive of that is I got my life in a part, in a situation where I can plan stuff forward and move and, and you know, get myself organized on a, a business plan for like the, the artwork that I want to do pretty much. Whatever. So. Right. Yeah. Damn right. Now, follow up question to that one. Now. We know both men and women make sacrifices. Now I know we don't have a woman on our on our um, panel tonight, right. but who do y'all want to come in? Men or women? You said what? Who do y'all feel make more sacrifices on a daily basis, or just on a wider scale, men or women? And why? <laughs> um. Every every answer we say is yeah, going to be a dangerous answer. I'm, I'm, I'm coming right. with them questions. <clears throat> I'm I'm going to say this in a generalized way, and I don't have any stats or nothing to back this up. So this is strictly opinion based. So please don't crucify me, guys. But tears take. Huh. Um, I'm going to say it voluntary sacrifices, women. Involuntary or requested sacrifices, men. I feel like women do a lot of stuff that nobody asks them to do and that nobody really needs, but they it makes them feel whole or, like, justified. Like, my wife does a lot of stuff around the house. I, I appreciate all of it supremely. But a lot of it is not stuff that's necessarily important to me. It's more stuff that she does because she wants to do it to make herself feel like I don't know. It's like something in her that she says she needs to just do. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's not a sacrifice you're making for me or the family. It's a sacrifice you're making just because you want to do it. So that's a voluntary sacrifice. Involuntary or requested would be, like, on a day-to-day basis, I won't ask for anything all day in a 24-hour period. But the amount of requests that come my way or things that I'm asked Mm -hmm. to do is... Mm -hmm limitless so like i think amen i think it it depends but i also feel like both sets of sacrifices are valid kind of like a lot of the shit like i said like my wife does some of it like it's not stuff that would be important to me on a day-to-day basis but i do notice the like like right now, she's out of town for the night. She coming back tomorrow. She had to go to Florida to do a, a session for her job or whatever. So like when she come, when she's gone, like I do notice those little things that she normally would be doing not being done. And it does have an impact. So like I feel like it depends on the dynamic. Or, or like in a married household, I would say definitely it's probably even it's just the women stuff is a lot more voluntary stuff that they just do. And men is more like they'll ask you a million 
for a million things, even if you don't ask for nothing. That's my opinion. Wow. Hope I don't get beat up. <laughs> I don't want no smoke, I don't think wife. You will. I don't want no smoke. I don't want no smoke, Miss Tiz. I don't want no smoke now. Oh, I, think, I, don't, I don't think you will. <laughs> I feel it. Um, me personally, I feel like it's mutual. It's like either. Um, because you have to weigh each each set of sacrifices way different. Um, the sacrifices a man makes, you have to weigh on that manly scale what we're willing to do, what we're able to do, you feel me? and vice versa. Um, for a woman, time might be everything. So for a man to sacrifice time for her, that may mean the world. You feel me? But to us, that don't mean shit. Time is time. You feel me? If I can't do it today, I do it tomorrow. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So we just got to weigh it. Um, to us, having that meal ready or a woman coming home and sacrificing, oh, I, I needed to go do my hair, but I know they need to be ready. I know he need, he want, he need to eat because he's been working day two. Let me go make a meal real quick for him. That means that may mean a lot to us to have our woman come cook a meal for us. You feel me? To her, that may be just something to do to get out of the way. So to her, that may be some meals that she's sacrificing. Well, thus, that may be something great. Right. So, I just think the the different sacrifices that each person makes it, it, at the end of the day and boil down to be even because it's the, it definitely is weighed on a different scale. Um, if you flip the scales, you feel me? Um, then everything will be greater on one or the other side because if you have a woman trying to make manly sacrifices, of course it's going to take a little bit more effort. You feel me? Especially when it comes to the physical sacrifice. Um, now. For a man to make a, a female's physical sacrifice, um, depending on what it is, it may be a great, great, great sacrifice. But then mm-hmm. again, it could be something like, oh, well, because at the end of the day, um, in some relationships, I don't know about all, but in some relationships, a man may want kids and a woman doesn't. You feel me? But the woman's like, you know what? I sacrificed my body to get this man a child. I love him that much. Right. So she's sacrificing mm-hmm. her whole, whole body, you feel me? For the sake of bringing another life in this world, so she's actually making two sacrifices. So, at the end of the day, she could possibly lose her life for giving that child. So, if she willing, if she's willing to make the ultimate sacrifice for you and that child. So, I look at it a little differently. Just that's just back, that's just a background to it. So, I mean, I say about mm-hmm. you. True, true. Uh. That was funny, Tess. But I didn't <laughs> mean to drop do that right. There. Yeah, I, I had never hit this level on this seat since I bought it, and I was just like, "Oh, let me see what this does." Like, oh, okay. Boop. Boop. Um, I like it. Though. I was going to say, I, uh, the person that actually do the sacrifice don't feel the actual result of the sacrifice. It's the person mm-hmm. who. He do the sacrifice or she do the sacrifice for that's going to feel it. Uh, and mm-hmm. and it's just like what they said with his example or whatever, like he appreciates that she is, she might just think it as one of those things on a list, but he appreciates that she doing that thing on her list or on the list or whatever. Right. So I, I feel like is that, and then it's, it all depends on the sacrifice individually too. Cause you know, like, like one of the biggest one of the biggest sacrifices for the woman is like giving birth and giving her life to take care of the child. No, that's a big like fact. that's 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 such a big sacrifice that when you think of sacrifices, that's probably the one of the top ten on the family feud list to put up there, you know, or whatever. The as far as what men sacrifice or whatever, you have to like I feel like you gotta look at the society we're in and the society we built as far as, you know, what we've done so far, you know, like, and that could also depends on your views about life. You know what I'm saying? Cause mm-hmm. there was a lot of men that sacrificed their lives in wars and, and, and sacrificed their lives to like, you know, the activists against, you know, certain things or whatever, like, you know, Black Panthers and stuff like that or whatever. There's, those are the first examples I think of because I'm a black male or whatever. So I feel like the 
the results and the achievements of the sacrifice or whatever kind of weighs in on what sacrifice because it, it it's like it's like you can't really rate the sacrifice mm-hmm. so much or whatever equally um but it's like within the genders only you know a woman can do certain sacrifices that a man can't and that's in vice versa like and until some scientists come around which they probably already started and and men start giving birth i don't understand i don't know why they don't even like giving birth so i don't know why a man wants birth for all that pain and everything but yeah nobody's topping that right now you know what i'm saying so yeah that's my pretty much agree with y'all <clears throat> yeah yeah but uh mm-hmm. With all that being said, I think it's time. Oh, what a time for! You think what, it's a, time? What, a, what a time for? What a time for? What a what a time for? Let me look at this. Oh yeah, it. I think it is oh. time, y'all. I think it's time. I, I think it's time. I We're think it's time. Never wola. It's about that time. <clears throat> all my partners fuck with me. <clears throat> Tears fuck with me. Face fuck with me. Y'all know what time it is. Good what, and fuckery. What? Good and a fuckery. Cameron voice. Hell real voice. Good and fuckery. All righty, 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 y'all. Um, once again, episode 34, Can Good you and Fuckery. Yeah. I'm sorry. I want to get a piece. I want to get a piece of cake. If you could just hold on one second, bro. <laughs> I don't want to miss none of this shit. Hold on, bro. Hold on. Oh man, this is great. This is great. All right, y'all. Episode 34, Good and Fuckery. Let's start it off um with a little bit of good. So I just saw this um post randomly. Um Randy Moore, black man, has been appointed the first black forest service chief. Cool. We just doing first. I don't know. Randy, Name Moore, Randy Moore. Randy Moore has been appointed the first black what? Uh, first black forest service chief. Oh, go black. Mm-hmm. There we go, King. There we go. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that's just black just man right there. Um, on 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 some good baller ish. You know what I'm saying? Well, uh, Will, Will Smith uh, wanted to spend his Fourth of July in New Orleans. And um, he found out that they're not, they didn't plan for a fireworks show. So you know what this man did? He bought fireworks for New Orleans. Oh, wow. Like for the city? <laughs> for the city. <laughs> what, what, you, what did you say? William Smith bought yeah. fireworks for the entire city? City for a fireworks show for New Orleans. I'm done. <clears throat> yeah. We'll be just stunned on another level. Yeah, just. Hey, I want this to happen. This is my type of party. We're gonna do this type of party. Like, I, yeah. like you know, in the neighborhoods around my way, you know, it'd be that one dude that he got the bigger fireworks than everybody else. So after everybody shoot off their little jumps, he'll keep the party going with his with his big rockers. You know what I mean? You know, but Just it don't be no jump. it don't be no city wide <laughs> shit. It be you know a couple blocks. <laughs> Heck, man. Man, we'll be just doing too much. <laughs> Yeah, jumping out of planes and some moish. Have you have seen his like, talks when he does like challenges and shit? Like he'd be having like world class production for a fifteen second clip. Yeah, he'd be doing it. He'd be doing it. <laughs> and Joe Button start hating on it. It was funny, if but yeah, he'd be doing, doing that the all the time. In the dictionary, you see Will Smith, and I got cake in my beard. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Will Smith. 
Fresh Prince of Fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> Next on the list, Tennessee State. Hersey Miller. Yep, that's right. Masterpiece son. He uh. signs a two. Na 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 na. And with those <laughs> na 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 nas, <laughs> he signs a two million NIL or endorsement deal after the N, uh, NCAA changed the um, rules and stuff about, I guess, getting paid for endorsements. Yo, I love that. Yo, I wish they should have in their first player. Because of that rule change, they should go back and retroactively like undo all that shit against the O'Bannons, against all of these players that they had to deal with that bullshit. Go back, mm-hmm. take that shit back against Reggie Bush, all of them. Like, get them kids, they they credentials back and, and, and they accolades back. Yep, yep. And then what's next on the list here? We're going. We're 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 right on the borderline where we go from good to fuckery here. Oh, so this fuckery borderline alert. is fuckery alert. The this borderline is uh, brought to you by Versus, <clears throat> as y'all know. Versus. I I I I I. I don't know this this. You didn't see the key sweat from Bobby Brown, bro. So yes. Oh my own so rock days good like I knew you would. <laughs> hey man, hey man, Bobby came in like, look, man, I know this pandemic had y'all not doing anything. We but got something in common. Boy. Hold on, hold on. We got something in common. Sharak, come on. I'm gonna drink you all night. I, I. Yo, Keith Sweat, yo, them niggas was up there drunk as fuck, bro. <laughs> yo, and Keith, Keith was uh, on a low shaded, yo. Bobby. On a low, yo. He kept just yo. on a low shaded. Oh, oh, you gonna do that? You do a little dance move and shit? Oh, am I am I bad am I battling you a new edition? <laughs> All them shit. Nigga, all that you're battling, shade, you're battling alcoholism the way it look. Yeah. When you were singing to that glass all night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nigga, hair was just. I he was doing so. the D-Lo Brown. <laughs> I Yo. have to start watching this shit. Yo, when I tell you so. the shit came out of nowhere, it was like a surprise in the night. It was like a a, a Jay Z or a Beyonce album. That shit just dropped. It won't no <laughs> no prelude. I ain't hear nothing no, about nothing. it until afterward. The first thing I heard about it was the recap. <laughs> oh, right. um, they said it wasn't like any promotion because it was like Essence Fest, and I think it was a part of Essence Fest. So in Essence Fest, Yo. they just had verses up there, but I don't think they really showed who who was going to be. This could have been like some last minute booking, but hey, hey, they put on the show. When I he tell did that little you, dance move, that he big did. bro, they had this yeah. breakdown moment, man, where they was like, you know, because you know, Sorak is one of the sponsors for the show or whatever. Uh-huh. These niggas got to doing this little interlude and like this little remix talking about the Sorak. <laughs> Oh my god. Keith Sweat was like, Surak, come on. And Bobby Brown was in the background, just we got something in common. <laughs> Keith Sweat was like, he was like, you tasted good like I knew you would. <laughs> and Bobby's yeah, still in the back all night. And Bobby's still in the background. We got something in common. <laughs> then this I'm nigga Keith drunk. Sweat took this Bobby cup B. and looked at it and did the D-Lo Brown and said I'm gonna take you all night <laughs> Bobby B we got something in common <laughs> never let you down Yo, this and part of the show is going to be horrible for, for the people listening. <laughs> but 
if you go back and watch this verses, you're gonna understand everything so much better. Just go back and watch the verses, then come back and click right to this part of the episode and pick back up with us. It's gonna be great for you, I promise you. It's it's amazing. Bobby Dude, Brown have and something Keith in Sweat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who thought of putting those two together, but boom. They here. got something in common. It's called alcoholism. Sirac. Sirac. Oh, not no. not not Sirac, but Sirac. <laughs> oh, hold on, man. It's, I, meta, it's manufactured yo, in, in, in Chicago. You Chirac. know how you know how I'm built, man. You know what I'm about to have to do, right? Oh, bruh. It has to happen, yo. Like, I, I know I shouldn't, but oh, my God, bro. These niggas. <laughs> These niggas. <laughs> Y'all don't know. I think he's about to look this up so we can all look at it. Whatever. Chirac. <laughs> Versus gives us so many Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got something in common. I like to thank Timberland and Swiss Beats for putting this all together just because they they beefed against each other one time and they did a battle and then made a business out of that. That's battle. a good point. That's a good that's a very good point. A straight oh, business. An entertaining Where business. What is this? What's Where y'all dream is? versus? Huh? What's your dream versus? My dream versus that hmm. is Jesus. Um, my, um, my dream versus that's never going to happen would be Michael Jackson versus Prince because that beef mm-hmm. is a long standing beef and I always found it entertaining. Um, but if somebody alive. Hmm. Yeah, I I don't I don't know, man. Why is that so oh. loud? Yeah. All right. See, yeah, I can't find it. Man. Okay. So. Oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna get I'm gonna get my home girl to send it to me, yo, cause she she got that shit. I know she got to save her phone. Bro. We're gonna send it. I'm gonna, we're gonna cut it up in here. Oh, you know. <laughs> oh, you know. Oh, you know. It's gonna be part of a bit. It's going. Down. Yeah. It's oh, gonna man. cut me off. We got something in common. The fucker. I'm moving. Shirak. 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 Oh man! All right, from one versus to another, the lame love versus uh, of uh, Eric, of Tiz's favorite person that he don't like is Bow Wow versus Soldier Boy, and they had DJ Academics actually DJ. Which I find the most hilarious. Like how Sol- Soldier Boy, Soldier Boy one. Yeah, to me. Yeah, I think everybody going to say that just because. A lot of people yeah. say Bow Wow one, yo. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You, I mean, Bow Wow got a high. Soldier Boy on was the doing some meme shit. Like this nigga played the same song like two or three times with just a different artist. Dub played it on that shit. <laughs> Like it, it was, it was ridiculous. Like, what in the hell are you like? What? This nigga was playing beats that he made <laughs> that won't even that won't even his song. It was just like <laughs> this nigga played the the hidden verse to him and Drake song that nobody's ever heard before that night. <laughs> <laughs> like this shit was wild. Soldier Boy is is a great form of entertainment anytime yes. he is shown on television. Yes. And it's like it's like you you, you want to be you feel like you should be embarrassed, but at the same time you don't care because you're laughing. You're yeah. laughing your ass. And off. because it's like he has a point to a lot of the shit he said. Yep, he do- like Dre. When he says when he says I'm the first TikTok artist, kinda he was the first nigga to have people doing them little challenges and shit. Mm-hmm. He's the godfather like, of that. He he's he's he is he's he's revolutionary in a lot of ways, man. I can't I if can't social media 
Big Draco. If social media right. was, um, <laughs> Dre. If, if if social media was um, personified into a person, I would say Soldier Boy. Between Soldier Boy and in on a, a evil clone side, uh, Takashi. Yeah, it would probably be in between those. And uh, the bad side of social media, Takashi. The yeah, funny shit is social, social media. Just give me social, social boy. Fuck the guy. Well, I, well, we all in agreement with that. All in agreement with that. Um. So, more now we in the fuckery part. Here we go. Hey! Here's some fuckery. The fuckery shot. Here's some fuckery. Here's some fuckery. All right. So, um, one of my favorite new artists. Um, actually, Face Mob actually put me onto this artist. Coy Leroy. Or whatever. Not Coy. Not oh, Coy and Leroy. Leroy. <laughs> Big Purr. Put me daddy on that. Don't Big put me on that. Don't put, put me on that. Big Purr. Nope. That's her me. song, man. With Pooh Shy. Okay, yeah, we're going to keep it moving. They call her Big Purr. Don't put, I'm, don't I'm put not me calling her me. no Big Purr. Nigga. I don't know. Coy Leroy. Nobody. You named the Coy Leroy? I'm going to call her Coy Leroy. Koi Fish. Yeah. But. <laughs> Boo boo and blood. <laughs> this is the artist. Um, St. John. St. John. Ooh. Yeah, he he was um, mm-hmm. he was at uh West Hollywood talking to uh Uzi's ex Britney Bird at a restaurant. Shout out VA. Shout out VA, mm-hmm. she's from VA. Oh, that's what I ain't even know that shit. All right, she's the hoop, she's the hoop in high school in VA. Oh, that's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. Um, well, Lil Uzi felt some type of way, I guess. So he walks up to St. John, swings, miss, and then somehow some gun got involved and they said they flashed it on St. John. And, uh, <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I feel like Lil, Lil Uzi had Nas, something. Nas had a, a, a verse about this. Fake thugs, no love. You get the slug. See before Augusto. No, though, Sean, no, before I was, ah, that was a great album. Yeah, <clears throat> you free bitches played out. Get, get stuck when in will, eight When will niggas ever die? That was a very good album. It's as soon as he swing, St. John moved out of the way, and he at that moment he knew he fucked up. <laughs> Right. Up right At this moment, I know that outside is about to open up. I just heard the most thunder. Mm. Thor? Is that you, Thor? Shango? No, that shit was loud. Zeus? That shit about to throw down. El- Elsa? Ow. Elsa, is that you? Elsa? <laughs> Elsa? Raiden? Raiden? <laughs> you do oh, a combo move? A tropical storm down here in Georgia. Oh man. I'm waiting on the wife now. She down there in Florida. I'm waiting on her to uh, hit me up now. Let me know. She you good. Know, yeah, everything on the up and up and up. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. What'd you just say? Yeah, man. It's a storm coming yeah. in, in Georgia right now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Will you say she gone? Florida. So you know, yeah, I hate that. I, I, I know you I hate know, it. I know no, you hate no it. Offense, <laughs> no offense to nobody who lives <laughs> there from there, but I hate traveling to Florida. I really do. I've been to Florida like two or three times, and every time I've been, it's been a horrific experience. I either get stuck and stuck there. I ain't had no issues, but phone. I can I can understand your plight for sure. You feel me? I uh, go to a city that don't nobody speak a lick of the English. <laughs> so it's horrible trying to order food at regular places like McDonald's. I went down there. I'm, I'm, I'm I, sorry I, I to break the park. You, you feel me? Like, add this to the I fuckery. Nah, this like, is fuckery. This is part of the segment <laughs> now. <laughs> right. Like, I, I went down there. For a little vacation with the wife, the second time, not the first, just the second time, not even the third, the second time. Went to casinos, had a good time down there. 
You feel me? Like, try to order food. Every time, it was a situation. Because nobody spoke the English well enough to understand hamburger or pizza. A hamburger. You feel me? I won't want to try nothing no different new outside of the regular palate because those are two easy things that people can't really mess up. But did they mess it up? Yes, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Getting stuck. I didn't find out to my third trip that Florida was the lightning capital. I didn't understand what that was, so I had my tell me they were like, oh yeah, we get the most lightning in America. So if there's lightning here, at the first strike of lightning, every plane is canceled until the last strike to fifteen minutes after the last strike. I was oh like, So God. how do you know the next strike <laughs> gonna come? You don't. I said, What the <laughs> So basically, just everything is just canceled until until whenever. I need y'all a better weather system. We get that Doppler, Doppler ten, mm-hmm. and Doppler hundred. <laughs> mm. I'm I'm sorry, but I I really can't stand. And anytime I hear somebody talking about Florida, I got to put that in. I'm sorry. But once again, no it's offense funny. to no one who's from there, lives there, or likes there. It is just my opinion. It's the dick of America. So, yeah. And you know all that crazy stuff? You know, Florida man. You know, you, you got to look out for Florida man. Florida man be oh, just doing something all the, all the time on the news. Florida man fights alligator over meth. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Yo. <clears throat> Yo, Florida is freaking crazy, man. And I think it's like each part of Florida his own little type of crazy. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't oh, been yes, I ain't, ain't been to every part of Florida, but yeah. Yeah, it's it's its own type of its own type of crazy. But at the same time, you know, I'm pretty sure if you go out there to certain spots, you're gonna, you're gonna have fun. But don't get trapped in lightning <clears throat> lightning capital of, of, of the country, pretty much. Oh man. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Let me clear my throat. <laughs> DJ cool for y'all. <laughs> I ain't want to be doing that all in the air because I know I'd be doing that all the time. Oh. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Play back the video and everything. <clears throat> what the, what's wrong with Padawan? And they've got an iron lung. With rust in it. Oh my god! <laughs> What's wrong with it? <clears throat> but anyway, yeah. Next, um, so <clears throat> I don't know if y'all know, but it's like a Britney Spears like documentary out or something, and it yeah, it's crazy. <clears throat> like she. Because of all that crazy stuff that she's done in the past or whatever, she's like in the stipulation, I guess, with her contract or something where she can't make her own decisions. She can't like, <laughs> like she can't make her own decisions. She don't even have the choice to have, like if she wanted a child, she she don't have the choice to have a child or whatever. Like it's it's crazy. Like I like. And now it's like the fan base now is like saying, you know, free Britney, free Britney. Everybody's saying free Britney or whatever. And uh, contracts, man. I don't know what it is, but I don't know how she even got into that contract. But, man, she's basically a slave to her contract right now. Or whatever. (laughs) Certainly is. I brought that up because the fans have been saying free Britney, free Britney. And you know what the universe did? The what? universe freed Bill Cosby on the technicality. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what happened. That's what happened. Oh, so Bill Cosby is free or, or whatever. Um, I'm pretty sure they had a party and everybody checked their drinks first and everything. Um, I'm not saying he... <laughs> 
I'm not saying um I don't say I'm 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 a bit torn, okay, because I grew up with the Cosby show or whatever. And shoot, I was born while the Cosby show was playing pretty much, whatever. And and basically when I'm, you know, when I look over the um look over the evidence or whatever, they really just had, they actually have him actually admitting to doing that shit or whatever. So in that sense, I feel like he should be punished. The, per, the person that messed up was the DA because the way they mm-hmm. set up like the first um, the first uh, agreement or compromise or whatever, the way they set it up, it was like a technicality in that that the judge had looked at and was like, because of this, we gotta let him go, <clears throat> pretty much. Cause it it um it violated his right to plead the fifth or whatever. That was one thing. Mm-hmm. And I believe the other thing, what was it? The other thing was he um he had to admit to it. But he couldn't. He couldn't say nothing about it or whatever. Something like that or whatever. But something in that in that technical like something in that agreement. It was a technicality, and the judges like said that was uh, like unconstitutional or something, and they they let him go. Pretty oh, much. <clears throat> or whatever. So on some on some on a. On the side note, I would say it's a good thing that it happened because then that let us know that these DAs just can't do whatever they want because they got away with that with a a guilty person. They can get away with that with an innocent person if they feel like sticking it to somebody. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Oh, so so with with that, that's when I um. I'm using that as the way to bring up my next subject or whatever. And like with laws and everything and rules and, uh, and, and, and things like that and all these loop, loopholes that we have. Um, what was it? Uh, the subject that brought me to next time is like with Shakar Robinson. Whatever. Because all right. She, of course, as we know, she um, she is not in the next um, round of the Olympics, basically because she, she didn't pass the marijuana piss test, or whatever. And like, you know, one side is like, all right, it's rules are rules. You've been knowing those rules beforehand, and yeah, or whatever. And I mean, I understand where she's coming from, or whatever. She's going through stuff, but. At the same time, like everybody goes through stuff, and you already knew those rules, or oh, or whatever. And if it was anybody else or whatever, they probably say the same thing, or oh, whatnot. So that's what I I about that. But as more, I was like looking into the Olympics or whatever. It's kind of I, I I look more and more. I was like, man, this they're like fighting any old thing to like just ban against it seemed like everything they from you can't have black lives matter up there t-shirts or they it was like it was something that wasn't even had nothing to do with black lives matter it was like a black um a a black head cap for when you're swimming or whatever and it wasn't like this yeah exactly like that and they in the Olympics banned that pretty much or whatever. So it's like, all right, <laughs> this is weird. This is weird. So all of this led to my next topic. Is it that rules are just rules and they just mean and, and all rules are meant to be followed or are some rules are meant to be broken or whatever. So Within that topic, I'm like, um, when are, what are some rules that y'all feel should never be broken? And when do you feel that 
rules should be broken. And then my next, my last question is, do morals make rules and laws or money make rules and laws? Mm. You want to go first, too? Uh, that's, a, that's, huh? uh, that's a lot to unpack, but I think I can follow. Uh, let's try. Okay, so first off, the first premise or question was, are rules meant to be followed or are some rules meant to be broken? I would say that unjust rules should sometimes be broken. That's the only way that the status quo or that progress can be made toward a better rule or a better version of said rule or the abolishment of said rule if it's not not something that fits into society. Um, to go further on that, what I would say is money does make rules though. Um, if rules were based off just of being fair, then morally justice would match what happens legally. But legally, that's not what happened. Legally, it's whatever you have, the money and the effort and the resources to prove mm -hmm. is what gets litigated and, and what gets uh, judiciated. So I, I would say um, it's definitely money that makes the laws that determines how the laws are applied that kind of regulates the laws like if you think about even what the police really are trying to do they're really just there to like save property they're there for like to protect property security give them people right yeah they, they're there to protect property so like at the end of the day like it's all about money and resources at the end of the day so yeah face mobby how you feel um Let's see, let's see, let's see. Now, I agree that unjust rules should definitely be broken when need be. Um, but I also feel that there are some rules that are classified as just that are in certain situations should be broken. Um, i.e., um, thou should not kill, um, you shouldn't kill murder. Um, 187, whatever you want to classify that, that's, that's um, definitely something you should never do. But would you kill for your family? Yeah, I would murder you in a heartbeat for my family. I'm willing to break that rule in a certain situation. You feel me? Um, and destitute. You're not supposed to steal. Still is against the law. Larceny is a, is a crime. But as a starving mother going to let her kids go go hungry, or she's going to go steal a loaf of bread for her kids. You feel me? Like, and, and, and certain situations, just rules. It's a necessity for them to be broken. Um, from the 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 crime stopper standpoint, no rule, no law should be broken. No rule should, no rule is unjust because it's put, it's put there for a certain reason. But are the reasons still applicable to the times? Mm -hmm. okay. True. Um, I get that. <clears throat> We, we as a culture, we as a society have come a long way since a lot of the rules that we govern by were initiated and, and, and put in place. But we right. still go to day to day acknowledging these same rules. Um, you can go, you can go to jail in certain cities for jaywalking. Nigga, what? That's crazy. That's Did you crazy. just roll up on me and give me a ticket for for my shoes for me walking? You need to talk about it. You need to tell me be careful. You don't be more careful next time. Do that. Got Serve it. and protect. Don't meet a quota. But that's a different conversation. But if you're like certain rules need to be broke, I'm trying. I'm trying to cross the street. Ain't nothing coming. I'm mm -hmm. right here. <laughs> you mean you want me to walk all the way down into the crosswalk? <laughs> For real? <laughs> my house is right here across the street. I walked all the way up the block right here, and I just happened in my house across the street. I need to cross right here. You feel jaywalking? Yeah. So it's a necessity to break some just laws. Now, unjust laws, uh, do away with them. Now, what makes laws and rules? Um, that depends on where you're at. But on the larger scale, um, money does. 
because money moves mountains. You feel me? Money moves the world. It's sad to say that, but mm-hmm. money makes things happen. Um, just look at um, one of the largest corporations in America, um, Walmart. Their company is so big and they give so much money to the government. Their company is allowed to do and set certain rules that the state and federal don't. You feel me? So their company stands outside of certain rules just because of the revenue. The amount of revenue they 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 give to the country, you know. So that's crazy. It, it, it's it's a here and there thing. You feel me? Like, <clears throat> but you really don't know that until you it's like 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 the stuff you know about where you where you've been and what you've experienced. You feel me? Like you only know that from the inside of experience, the inside of knowledge. You feel me? So you know about certain rules and the application of them and why they're set there. But once you've been on both sides of the table, you understand like that rule don't make no damn sense. But other hand, other hand, you're like, yeah, I see why they put it there. Mm-hmm. So to look at a rule it, and and break it down and say, is it just or is it right to have that? It all depends <clears throat> on also the stance you have on in authority. Um, <clears throat> if you're the rule maker. Or the rule enforcer, you feel me? So the the rules are the rules. But if you're the person the rules are being enforced on, you're like, man, that shit don't make no sense. Why do I really need to do why do I really need to do it? I can do this I can do that. You feel me? So I mean, it all depends on the stance and situation you're in in that current stance. Um, but if we're talking about on the larger scale, uh you I mean, to know faces know how I feel about a lot of shit. (laughs) It is what it is. Uh, things that I need to abide by, I abide by. Things I don't, <laughs> I won't. <laughs> but I, I, I teach and I teach and raise mine to do what is correct. You feel me? I right. teach and raise mine to do differently than their father does because their father does what their father does. What I want better for mine, so I, I teach mine differently than I do. Um, but I, I'm just at this point with rules and laws and stuff like. I'm, I'll, I wish that there'll be a revamp on a lot of stuff because, like I said, like we're, we're living by old, olden rules and olden times. We're still talking about old shit, but no one oh, wants to real. take a, a relook at it. We, we champion, we champion our, our old rules and standards, but every day, like oh. we see them violated in the media, and nothing to say about that. We just saw, we just had a president who just violated everything, like. A, a president is supposed to be upheld to do and, and, and govern itself back. And that was allowed. And people are mad now that he's not back in office. <laughs> so I mean, like, he's a rules and laws. Rules and laws. Huh? It all depends on what stance you're in. I mean, on that side, he didn't do nothing wrong. <clears throat> you know, he, he's outstanding. On this side, do you really see what the fuck he's doing? <laughs> <All right. laughs> so. I mean, yeah, that's my opinion. Sure. I feel like on this subject, one, it really is no rules. It's only it's only regulations and stipulations to put on a society. Like if you gain and acquire enough money and power, do you really have any rules and laws that you have to abide by? Especially if all the rules and laws is, is really made to protect money and people who make money for the government government that makes the laws or whatever. So I mean, in a sense, every rule can be every every rule can be broken. The only thing that could like of course I feel like the rules that shouldn't be broken is, you know, protect all women and children you know, from harm and, and, and predators, it, you know, it just like, just like Faye said, thou shalt not kill, you know, you, you pay your debts, don't, don't steal from no one, you know, the, the normal golden rules, you treat people as you want to be treated, you know what yep. I'm saying? Yep, yep, yep. Or, because even though sometimes you need to treat people how they, how they are treating you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, <laughs> to correct those, but Really, really in this society, if we want to look at it at a moral standpoint, 
if you were Christian, look at your Christian values. If you're Muslim, look at your Muslim values. If you, you know, if you know, Buddhist, whatever. But if you looking at the core values of what is supposed to be good and morale, there is no such things as rules and laws for real in this society, especially when if you have enough money and power and enough people on your side, you can do whatever sick thing you want and get away with it as long as there's not any social media around. And for a good long time, Sad but for, for a good long yeah. time, I mean, <clears throat> for a very long time, that has been true. I mean, mm-hmm. we can go from the first laws and rules that was ever made, it be Code of Hammurabi, or if you're in, in Egyptian time, all those rules and laws was made to control the people so they can have them do what they need to do or whatever. It's the same thing today. Like, right. no one in power is really thinking of, this is, this is the good of the country. If they're thinking the good of the country, if they make it's, the it's country look good, too. yeah, it's an ego thing. I'm the one that made the country look good. I'm the one that did this. We rose, um, we have brought unemployment down. This, this is my other bragging right. This, that, and the third. Yeah. Nobody really cares. And I mean, the common man, I can't really blame the common man for not caring because we already, like, you, Tiz, you have a family. Face has a family. The main concern of y'all is your family. Anything outside of that is no concern to y'all for real. And that's nope. it. Nope. So, I, my thing to that is, like, you make your own rules. It's all perception. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's all perception. If you think, like, think choices, about... Choices, man. It's choices. Yeah. You have think, the choice think, to accept or reject <clears throat> any energy that you wish. You can ex- you can allow something to exist in your world, or you cannot. Uh, and, and I realize that because a lot of a lot of powerful people with companies or whatever, um, a lot of that money might have came from some unscrupulous deeds or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And all they did is just chop at us as, hey, this is a bad thing, but that's my sacrifice. As and half the damn countries it. made off of uh, bootlegging, <clears throat> uh, gun running, yeah. and, and, and racketeering back in the day. Yeah. And they look at it as, hey, this is my sacrifice. I'm sacrificing my morals so I can get to this point. And at this point, look what I got generational wealth for my family. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't no rules, man. Ain't no laws. I'm not telling people to go out here butt naked to do whatever the heck y'all want at gunpoint in Florida. I'm not telling y'all to do that at all. I'm not telling y'all to put, you know, put pills and stuff in people's drinks because you got money. I'm not telling y'all to do that. Middle I'm just telling y'all to watch. Y'all don't do nothing else. Y'all have done enough. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I mean, after Minnesota and the pussy punt, uh, Postmates, I don't know what this <laughs> thing anymore. <laughs> I'm the one with the pussy and the, <laughs> the, the, the cigarettes. The pussy postmates. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I got the good Man. stuff for you. Okay. <laughs> Don't y'all know what I'm talking about? Check check out live. Sounded, sounded check out like lives. Bobby Generic mom. <laughs> <laughs> Now, but, moving um, on this week, yep. before we get to anything else, I just want to put something else in the fucking name. One thing I hate is how you really can't go nowhere if you got an animal. Yeah. That's nowhere. Important. That is a different. I mean, it, it really yeah. is because I mean, I'm going. To, I'm going to be on some Karen shit. I'm sorry. It's discrimination. I mean, hey, there are little babies. They should be going to go everywhere too if they're, if they're trained. You know, they're on a leash. Why can't I bring him in certain places? I don't want to take most, the because most people thing. ain't allergic to humans. 
but they are allergic to dogs or cats. I don't know about you. I'm allergic to some humans, man. I'm, I'll be coughing and sneezing right around some people. Oh, get that, get that, get it away from me. I'm just saying. Give me, making me itch. Man, you stuff. want, you want the realest answer, and this is gonna make Peter mad. It's gonna make a lot of people mad, man. At the end of the day, as a general rule of thumb, and human society, not necessarily like specific countries or stuff like that, but like as humans, we don't give a shit about animals. We give nah, a shit about them just as much as they amuse us or make us happy. But if they are an inconvenience in any way, we will remove that inconvenience and keep it pushing because they're not humans. So we don't have that same connection to them. Some people do. Again, this is a broad <laughs> sweep, but we move that goalpost of how much we give a damn about an animal very liberally depending on what the situation is we love 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 animals when bambi when bambi mama died <laughs> but our ass will fuck up bambi's cousins and, and other woodland friends on thanksgiving and not think another damn minute about it be oh damn that was good y'all got some more you can give me a plate for the for the go like I mean, like, you know, we, 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 eh. yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. You, you get some white folks crying over a, a police dog and shit. That makes the first page. Yes, they do. <laughs> like, again, they I'm will joking, do man. that as they eat a bison burger on their plate. Again, we, we yeah. selective about animals. So it's like, <clears throat> we, we cool with animals as pets, but you, you also, pet but, cat, but they you also Chinese don't. Food? They also don't let pets just in any type of restaurant or any type, like some places just ain't gonna let you in there unless they're a service dog. It, it, you know, we cool with them, but as far as it's not inconvenient, once it becomes inconvenient, we, eh, okay, you're not human. You know what you could do, Faith? You know what you could do? If it is a service dog, you can do your best Ray or a Stevie Wonder impression. Get one of them dark ass glasses. <laughs> and one of them and just uh, walk around the guy, the guy sticks. sticks. <laughs> the guy sticks. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get to be a service dog. I'm trying to get a train. I think you should anyway. do it. I think you should do it and record it. <laughs> I think you should do it and record it. Let's see what happens. Register them as uh what is it, them uh emotional support <laughs> dog. Yeah. That works. Yeah, <laughs> oh, he's that goes me, right he's down the line. Me through my pandemic trauma, we found one rule that faces women to break. There you go. One mm. rule, one law. He got serious. And I think it's dog. Time. <laughs> <laughs> that dog got involved, boy. He got serious about that thing. <laughs> 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 Yeah. We'll break the rules in the laws for KJ. When that, when that nigga said, I'm going Karen on it, I was like, oh, he's, he mean that. He mean that shit. Oh, man, he done clutched his pearls. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. I am appalled. This, I think this everywhere, motherfuckers yo. don't allow dogs. The only reason I ain't, I ain't take them everywhere when I was out of town, because I, I ain't want to have no issues out of town. But in town, he going everywhere, yo. Like every store he go in, dollar store, Walmart, like it don't matter. <laughs> He's in the store walking around on the chain. <laughs> he don't bark, he don't move. <laughs> Who that with that dog? Oh, that's just face with the dog. Where right. Dog? <clears throat> that's all it is. When I you mean, live I in certain areas, can... that should be allowed. Like you, you pull that shit off some of these Walmarts now here. They gonna let you know that. Uh, you and your dog get the hell out, uh, sir. <laughs> uh, sir, sir, sir. Here at the <laughs> Buckhead Walmart, and, uh, and that, like you that. go to the, the the West End Walmart. Hey, Sean, uh, you can't have that dog in here, Sean. Hey, hey, hey Sean, you can't have that dog in here, man. You gotta get that dog about him, man. Hey, Is man, that Walmart man, in Buckhead? That dog up here, man. You better you mean go get that dog about him, man, Sean. Hey, so you gotta get that dog about him, man. I don't care. Hey, man, I hear you. Though, you man. did the you did the hair support, wave. Man. You got the most support that shit about him, man. You gotta get the dog about him, man. You did that hand wave, perfect, Tiz. You did the did the left. 
Can't yep. wait. Perfect, dog. Uh. Same, man. Hey, shot. Hey, hey, you gotta get that. Hey. Oh shit. It's a, it's above me now, shot. You might get it in the flea market, <laughs> but I don't know about. Oh yeah, you might get it in the flea. Mm, yeah, the, the green flea, They might they might try to see if you want to fight that dog while you're in there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so you might not want to bring that in the flea market. <laughs> Hey man, you know. We oh, you from Virginia? Oh, Michael. Yeah, man, we take some bets in the back, man. Come on, man. <laughs> why you, you from why Virginia, you here, man? You know, Vic. Dollars, man. No, no, shit. no offense to Vic at all. Yeah, you know, they, <laughs> the dog fight against the law, y'all. So don't do that. And I tell you, yeah. what, And I tell you, what against the, the law, y'all. Going out of town, you can't the dog. I don't know what he just said. What you say, Faye? I said somebody called the cops on me this weekend when I was going out of town just for having a dog. Oh, well, that's a that was a bit that was Karen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's How did he? <laughs> oh, he has a dog out of town. Oh, let me call he him this lady, bro. We'll put an end to this here. Nine one one. And he had a curly mustache. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was up to I'm no good when he said yeah, Boulder I'm Dash. Really, what? I'm gonna grow that shit. <laughs> oh man. Space, he, he, call, he called me a rat fink. <laughs> <laughs> he said that he was gonna tie me to a railroad. Right. <laughs> 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 he ran off with a top hat and a round bomb with a fuse. <laughs> Just chuckling to himself. <laughs> <laughs> so how did he laugh? Oh, like ha 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 ha? No. And like, as I <laughs> dialed the police, he told us he told his henchman to cheese it the fuzz. And I don't like cheese on my um, I don't like fuzz on my cheese. <laughs> oh, that means it was bad. It bad. I know it's, it all, I know it's already mold, but it was bad. It was bad or no. worse. I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> <laughs> that should be oh, against the law, too. Oh, shit. Mm. And so should mm-hmm. face his mm-hmm. man laws. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Hold on. <laughs> Is he crying? All right, fellas, this we gonna face his man. Like, <laughs> what? what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, we can do that again. No, oh, you know, I'm probably gonna use that one. <laughs> All right, um, this week with the man laws, um, I got four quick ones, real quick. Um, number one. Knowing to shut your mouth and move on. Know Remember your that? role and people. shut your damn mouth. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times these young men are old and keep running their mouth sometimes and get these other situations they don't want to be in. Um, sometimes it's best to know when to shut your mouth and just move on, man. There's ain't nothing wrong with that. Hey, just keep it pushing. <clears throat> don't, don't, don't like, no check your ass, can't catch. Just basically quick to the point. I'm so good Number at that. <laughs> you, you say you're so good at that? That's part of my job, man. You know what? I'm going to just let you talk. <laughs> I'm going to shut up. Because you're going to get right. off my goddamn phone. Yeah? And, and I'm talking to yourself. I'm just sorry. Survival tech. That's it. Number two. Know how to not overcommit in situations. I need to learn that. <laughs> Too many Definitely times you try to put your all in and your all is not needed. Know when to give your all and when not to. No. In the NBA, they need. call it load management. There, I, there you go. There you go. True. Straight to the point. Load management. Know how to manage your load. <laughs> Yo, you know I'm immature as fuck, right? You can't say those bullshit like that. Oh, nigga. Pat, oh, put that pause. on a clip. Know how to oh, pause. Pause. 
Oh, smoke it! Hey, y'all smoke it out here taking a shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I ain't gonna tell nobody else. On another man law, wipe your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Wipe your yeah, ass, wipe your ass, wipe your ass. Yeah, um, number three, know how to deflect temptation. Mm. Mm. Ping, ping, ping. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Don't get caught up. Don't give in. It's always when you're doing right, the temptation wants to tempt his way in. Yeah. Don't even, don't even entertain it. You feel me? Indeed. Don't give a second thought. Always revel in the thought of what you have. Big facts. A bird in the Number a bird two. in the hand is worth two in the bush. There you go. I need to I stop giving them right. second thoughts. <laughs> I think I've been giving them like three or four thoughts, a couple of tens. Then you know, but I don't I, I don't do it. I don't do it. I don't do it them, them, but I give them, them some thoughts. Them thoughts is the problem. That's the problem now. You're right. <laughs> You're right. Damn I like to give a shout out to Megan Knees. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> oh, what? I'm done. I'm done. This. You got to continue Megan with the man loss. Megan's knees, though. Oh Jesus Christ, man! What they what sacrifice are you every video. About? <laughs> <laughs> they sacrifice every video. Body, yaddy, 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 yaddy. <laughs> Deflect that temptation, y'all. Deflect it. Ping, ping. Face got the truth. Amen. <laughs> and amen. <laughs> <laughs> Walk with your head held high and confident. That's right. You gotta yeah, start yeah. with your yeah, first man. Be confident in everything you do and walk in that. If you don't be too prideful, but have pride in yourself. It's a thin balance you gotta have with that. Too prideful, don't you get too and you get conceited. Indeed. You just to run the balance of having pride and you can walk with confidence. You feel me? Makes sense. Some people see that. Some people see that and it's a, what, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not an attraction, but it's like a magnet. You feel me? Like you draw other good things around you. You, you, you. Yeah, that's an attraction. You feel me? Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess. Makes sense to me. We can roll with so, it. So, I mean, but when you doubt and you, true. you walk into doubt, all you get is negative. You feel like you, you keep getting so much negative around you and negative coming to you. You got to be confident and walk and walk with confidence in yourself to yeah. have that positive. You can have that positive success. You feel me? So, man, that's my four man face man loss this week. Man loss. That's right. Walk tall. Walk hard. Wait, that's Dewey Cut. Walk hard. That was walk. hilarious. Man. Pause. Walk hard. I don't want to play some walking hard to it. <laughs> you remember I'll back in high school good. when they used to call you to the board all of a sudden and you being stared at the girl butt for like 30 minutes and seven period and then you realize, oh, I got to get up and go to the board in front of everybody. My shit rock hard, D. Levi. Yeah, you got to like, you got to do was, like that a. That was walking hard. I had to, I had to uh, perfect the art of walking, of like uh, writing on the board with one arm and uh, your other hand, you know, holding it. Try to look cool. Yeah, you I doing did it some nasty shit. Respect. Thank God, ain't nobody never pull up my shirt or nothing, man. I used to take my whole Johnson <laughs> and take it up and and just put, put it up it, over the put it up in my belt. belly. So it would just it just be sitting up in my in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> I got an Audi. I got a. In my I got an Audi, not an Eddie. And you know, back then, though, the good part was, you know, grew up in the nineties, so like clothes was big. So like, yeah, I have on a big sweatshirt or something. <laughs> but if, <laughs> boy, thank God, ain't no girl that would just come and try to be playful. Let me see your belly button. Oh, oh you gonna see a lot of dick. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> Ain't no belly button. <laughs> one freak jump in the back of the English class. <laughs> Ain't no belly button, bitch. Just that dick. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I'm editing that out. I just drew. <laughs> <laughs> Say what? <laughs> Shit. Oh, oh fuck. <laughs> oh man. Oh my god, bro. Oh my god. I spent this whole episode trying to stay off of one of Pat's clips, but I got a feeling that <laughs> <laughs> Pat's clips <laughs> like the shack in a fool of the week. <laughs> <laughs> my ass on that boy that JaVale McGee. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Today's highlights. <laughs> Nigga, oh, I am. Cry- oh man, I needed that type of crap, man. I appreciate this. I I don't know what how we got here, <laughs> or how this conversation got started. I needed that laugh, man. I needed that laugh. God damn. Uh, no, bitch, don't touch me right there, girl. That's that dick. <laughs> so what's the answer here? Uh. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yo, carry the two. Yo, carry this. They used to have to. They used to have to give out the church hug sometime in the hallway, yo. Oh, shit. The, the the hate maker hug from the far away. Nigga, exactly. I'm trying to get a whole hug. <laughs> Nigga, Nigga, come embrace this love. <laughs> Dig me all up in the girl titties. Hey, come here. Come here give me a hug, girl. Hug, uh, girl. Mm-hmm. Damn right. <laughs> you hug a girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, they what is that? that no, that's just my belt buckle. <laughs> you know, belt buckle. <laughs> Girl, that's this. Yeah. Why is it pulling like that? You know how the jean pants be, you know, folded and stuff, and it look like when you sit down, it's like, but yeah, that's all that is. It's just the jeans, they were like the way they fold it. No. Girl, girl, come on, go with me to prom. Girl, feel this dick. <laughs> all right, I'm cutting that. I'm cutting some of this. I'm going to have to trim this. Oh, God, this is horrible. <laughs> oh, but I needed to laugh tonight. So thank y'all for indulging me in this bullshit here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Oh my God, man. That is hilarious to me. Oh, who was that? Join the partners next time. Be? Right. <laughs> <laughs> For this <laughs> Oh, I'm just Pause. I, I don't know, man. This shit funny to me though, man. Uh, who's that comedian that used to do that, man? This is funny to me. <laughs> Oh man! Oh no! I don't know how. Where? How? Where did it? What? What were we talking about? I don't know, <laughs> but we, we got it recorded, so we can always go back. <laughs> Yo, talking about somebody about to be dying laughing when I edit this week, boy. Thank y'all. This has been amazing. I don't. <laughs> know. I, I, <laughs> I'm gonna have to roll up after this. <laughs> Oh, oh my god! Oh my like, god! Tell him like Kendrick Lamar back in high school, girl. I know you want this dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, bro! Oh man! Oh man! Might have 
money trees, money trees. Look at these gray sweatpants. <laughs> oh man. Yo, high oh, school man. was a funny time, boy. I sure used to be funny as hell, bro. Girl told me that um that uh gray sweatpants and joggers are like male lingerie. <laughs> nah, <laughs> they them, them in pajama pants, yo. My wife won't let me go nowhere with them shits, huh? <laughs> it, ain't, it, ain't no, it ain't no just swinging the wall by no nigga. No, nigga. I gotta go get some juice. She you gotta get knows. some juice. Right. She already knows about to be going down. I'm gonna be on fucking register 13. And then gonna be the little lady there sitting there staring at this dick. And she gonna have to kill somebody. <laughs> so, uh, Pajama pants and sweatpants is off limits going anywhere outside of the neighborhood. Like, I could wear them to, like, work. And the only reason I could wear them there is, to, like, you know, because it's, you know, a physical environment, athletic environment. So she, like, it, it makes sense there. But to just be going casually, just hanging out, oh, shit. Shit me. Better come on, put these duggarees on. Come on, put these duggarees on. Put these chinos on. This is how the girl got me. This this is how the girl got me. She was like, "You look like the type to just be going out with male lingerie." I'm like, "What the hell? You need male lingerie? I'm not out here in my drawers." I'm thinking, she's, she's talking about I'm like out here worried about drawers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, like, I ain't that. This I'm is thinking, not print. I'm thinking like, so, yeah, I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, yeah. this is no, that I ain't you that. I'm like, what the heck you mean, dog? You do that. I'm like, all I'm wearing is some sweatpants and joggers. Like, that's exactly what I'm talking she about. Say you, she said you got on the male equivalent of uh, boy shorts. Right, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I love women in boy shorts. I I didn't know. She said, she oh, said, she said, she said them shits is like sundresses, nigga. Oh, my God. And I love sundresses on women. <laughs> The yeah. male thunder. Yeah, man. No, we don't, we don't do that, man. But sometimes around the house, man, like I, I have an alternative, you know, something I can wear, but I just throw on the, you know, the sweatpants just so the wife can see the, you know, the dick cleavage, you know, give her a little peek. Let her, let her, let her see how we hanging today, you know? Yeah. Nigga, did you just say dick cleavage? <laughs> <laughs> This week on episode 34, Tiz gives more marital advice Dick to keep the spice going. Hey, man, look, the wife, your wife walk past you sometime with the uh, with the TikTok leg is on or something to show the cuff. Sometimes you got to walk past her and show your dick cleavage, you know what I mean? Let her see let her see your printage, you know what I mean? Just walk real slow past, like, like let, the, let, the, let it be one evening with, like, the TV on in the living room or something, and it's dark, though. So, you know, you can see the silhouette and you just walk on across and, you know, just kind of slowly walk across so she can see the sway, you know. You know, sometimes you got to do that for your wife, man. Let her get her get her looks in. Um, sometimes you can't control it because it'd be morning time. And you know what I'm saying? Morning <laughs> it's morning time. time. And he, that's exactly how it'd be. It's with that same voice. It's morning time. I'm up. I'm up. And, you, yeah. you know, you got to walk around, stuff like that. So use bathroom. And all oh, that morning, stuff. morning time ain't about no looking. It's time to get the action morning. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that's the that time right there. You know, we, uh, shit, uh, too much blood in the morning. We, we can't fight all that. We got to go ahead. Uh, you gonna have me have me relieve this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have me have me out here in these streets walking through Walmart with my shit all tucked up. Clothes a little tighter now. I can't be walking around. Why you got your flashlight right there, sir? What is that? Uh, walking around looking like a uh, dang, dang octopus uh, flying around. And... Uh, uh, then I got to come back home and explain why I ain't got no groceries. What happened to you? I got kicked out of Walmart. Why? Walk around with this dick. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean to you? None of this shit. <laughs> I am turning up, but it's fun. So damn it, y'all go deal with this shit. I'm gonna have to mute this or something, but 
I can't cut. I turned around and I knocked I all the cans up. down. I'm gonna have to leave. I'm gonna have to leave at least one of these. This dicks in there. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> That was she said. Every, every time you say it in the in the <laughs> in the bed, I'm have to cut to something else. This, hey, how you doing, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> you go back. To you. Make sure one of them jokes be like the sausage, the sausage party or something, running or something, do some some funny shit. <laughs> <laughs> or like or like something something in that shape like a cactus swaying in the breeze or some shit you know random missile launch yeah you know I feel <laughs> you feel me you feel me all right hey Patreon uh, this is called pre-production <laughs> yeah man um this is gonna be a fun episode here buddy um but yeah man um I reckon that's about a good a place as any to end this week's show so um I don't have no black right. business after that. I don't even feel comfortable talking black business after this show. Um, this been a, <laughs> I, I, I know what I want to call this episode. <laughs> Just I wait until I don't know it how pop that's up. Gonna, yeah, I don't know how that's. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I just wait till it pop up. This boy. Ah, yeah. oh, but oops. That's 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 good timing there, buddy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know what it uh shit man. Uh this been a hell of an episode here this week, guys. Um episode 34. We did another one, another one in the book. Oh, yeah. The Jack episode when he went to the label. Um Trey Foe. Yeah, man, the dick Trey Foley. You know, um, as always, if you want to support us financially, um, please. Feel free to do so. You can donate to us by going to dollar sign partner tiz one. That's P-O-D-N-A-T-I-Z one dollar sign at the beginning of it on your cash app. Get on your cash app. Um, or you can also donate for as little as a dollar on buymeacoffee.com. You can also sign up for memberships there for as little as five dollars a month. Um, and with those memberships, you get exclusive perks like behind the scene episodes. So whoever is the person who gets on Buy Me A Coffee for this episode is going to enjoy the fuck out of that this because it's a lot. It's oh, probably not going to make it to the mainstream. Um, so yeah, yeah man. And you ain't have to know, like, you ain't have to like, you know, use your forty dollars to get it. It's as low as <laughs> indeed, man. Indeed, as low as no price. single life prices for y'all. <laughs> and um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, you know, come on over to buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners and, you know, sign up for a membership. You get Discord access, you get exclusive perks, you get the name topics, you get panel access, you get to uh, pretty much, you know, get behind the scenes at all times. Um, and you get exclusive deals on merch. Um, and if you go over to our patreon.com and, and get a membership there for as little as $5, $10 on up, um, you get all of those same perks, but you also get free merch from time to time. So, you know, join us on those if you want to support financially or if you want to support uh, by buying something tangible. Um, you want something that's, you know, shows that you're a member of the pod squad for your money. Um, how can they do that, Face? Now, 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 now. Well, First of all, you can go to teespring.com backslash doors backslash partner dash closet dash one. Once again, teespring.com backslash stores backslash partner dash closet dash one. Just put like three or four new designs up during the past couple of days. Got to do some rearranging to the store to, to highlight the new stuff. Come on, check it out. Trying to make a statement, get one of the statements tees. If you're just trying to be casual, get one of the casual tees. If you just like hoodies, get a hoodie. If you need a bag, got that too. One in case for your iPhone, got that too. Samsung, got that too. Come check out Partners Closet. Now, in addition to that, we also have Faces Personal Store. Now, that's Face and Company. You can come to teespring.com backslash stores backslash face dash co dash number two. Once again, that's teespring.com backslash stores backslash space spell P H A C E dash co C O dash the number two. Come check me out. 
Indeed, indeed, indeed. And if you would like to just follow us and, you know, follow along with all of our non-sensory talk to us throughout the week, you know, communicate with us outside of the podcast itself. Pat, how can they get in touch with us out here, man? Hey, we on TikTok, we on Instagram, we on Twitter, we on Facebook, we on all the social medias, T at T H E P O D N A S. You put it in the search and you will find us. Yes. Find us now. Uh, like, comment, mean. subscribe, share. Indeed. All that shit. Please, please, please. Oh, and oh, if you have suggestions please. that you want us to react to some videos or whatever random thing you shoot see on the us. internet, go ahead, shoot it to us, and we'll bring it right on the live. You didn't ask us, but we're going to give it to you anyway. All right. Indeed, man. And on YouTube.com backslash uh, what is it? Backslash C backslash <laughs> <laughs> the partners. Um, but basically, man, go to YouTube, type in the partners. You can see it right above my head. Type that in and you can follow along with all of our video content. Um, we got a live stream going tomorrow. I'm going to be doing, um, so I got a three part series. I did the first part, um, basically, uh, for brothers, like myself 15 years ago who was thinking about getting married or who were looking to start that path with their woman and just kind of didn't know where to start or were fucking up in the areas that they were starting. So um, now we're going to be talking about now you're ready to get engaged, you're ready to propose or you just propose. What should you be doing as you prepare for the actual ultimate step of marriage and you prepare for you know, that long lasting commitment. So uh, join me tomorrow if you're a married person, you know. Um, yeah, well, actually, I guess this will be airing after that. So never mind. Come on over to YouTube, don't watch the replay if you missed the live. I don't know if you'll catch the live, but if you're not in the pod squad already and this the first time, this is the first thing you've seen from us or heard from us, come on over to YouTube and uh, yeah. Watch that content. It should be good. And if you're a married person, please feel free to give your words of wisdom and your gems in the comment section, chat, or join me on the panel as well. Um, like, comment, sh- subscribe, share. All indeed. That. All that good shit. And um, if all of the <clears throat> stuff that we've said so far has just been too much for you to remember, just go to thepodness.com. Thepodness.com. It's real simple, real easy, and you can find all of that stuff that we just said right there. So you can get the merch, you can get the content, you can get uh, live shows, all of that good stuff. So please, please, please join us at thepartners.com. And um, yeah, man, as always, I am one third of the partners. It's your boy, Tiz. Hey, it's the other third. Hey, it's the Padawan. Hey, and I'm along with Dramatic Pause. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, it's face in the place, and I'm out. And we up out this thing. Time to roll up, yeah.